Papua New Guinea is one of the high burden countries uh, in malaria, uh, and um, it it is um, a country that has a, a burden that's uh, higher than any other Pacific Island countries, and uh, second or third only to uh, some of the uh, Western Pacific region countries. Uh, and uh, but what has happened over the um, uh, last decade or so through the initiative that's come in through the Global Fund, we've been able to um, uh, get down the, um, the, the prevalence and the incidence of malaria down to a level where we, we, we could uh, describe it as, as uh, being able to um, con control it. Uh, and um, that is from the 2000 uh, figures. Um, and so what was um, of concern is that our malaria program or strategy uh, was was um, uh, centered around the the control strategy, uh, and uh, what is now the call on the, on the global scene uh, from the WHO level uh, as well as at the regional level was to call for pre-elimination and elimination, uh, and and so that that uh, has been very, very important for us, especially after coming to this uh, 2015 part of the MDG goal uh, and, and uh, the desire to see how we align ourselves. Uh, and, and so the, the, the call uh, with the Asia-Pacific Malaria, Malaria Alliance uh, through the uh, Prime Minister of Australia and the Prime Minister of Vietnam was was a very important call. That's the uh, LMA, right? That's that's right. Uh, and and um, so that Apuma is is what what uh, is is the avenue through which we we can uh, align to and galvanize all of our support, uh, especially down at our level to to see how we can harness the the, the resources and the support to help us uh, move toward. Uh, the call for elimination uh, or pre-elimination. Now, it's still a challenge for us uh, because while we, we we have the um, the incidence and, and and especially the uh, prevalence of malaria come down to to a level that's controlled, there is still you know certain pockets where it's like hot spots and and still a very difficult challenge for us. So in our country is divided into to four, four regions. We have the highlands regions, which is up in the colder part of the climate where at that high altitude malaria is not as common. Uh, and then down on the coastal part of our country, which is um, where um, a, a lot of malaria is. And then in the islands where it is the hotspot uh, malaria um, endemic setting, uh, and, um, and 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 then right out in the remote islands where we have the the chance to um, um, to, to be able to um, start the process of pre-elimination elimination, elimination. Uh, and, and so the Epoma itself is is an avenue through which we can be able to see how we can all uh, harness and, and and get the support. That, that, that's necessary. We have recently uh, joined the the APMEN, which is the Asia Pacific um, Malaria Elimination Network. So we have become the 18th member of that 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 network. And and part of what happened was the open uh, avenue uh, or means where we were able to get to uh, Sri Lanka. And, and see Sri Lanka's experience over the several years, and, and uh, they will be declared as eliminating malaria by the end of October, uh, certified by WHO because they've be had no malaria for about three years now. So it's an exciting time uh, at this stage uh, with, with the global focus on, on pushing through to the elimination, you know, of, of malaria.
um, but we still got a long way in PNG to work hard and we, we are not naive, we, we know where we have to continue the vigilant uh, focus in, in dealing with, with, with the control strategy at this time. The sustained um, funding that's needed uh, is, is a very important part because obviously the global fund that's come in uh, over the years has, has given us the, the funding support that we needed. Uh, and uh, as an example, uh, one of the main stay of, of malaria uh, co control was, was the bed net distribution. Uh, and uh, that, that support came through in a big way from, from global fund. But since the, the global fund has adjusted and changed the, the net net uh, um, the the treated bed nets has, has come come down the, there's funding that's been cut on it and so we have to re-strategize and look how we, we approach uh, this this very important part of it and and so that that's that's why it's it's important uh, for us to continue to push for sustained funding uh, in areas where we want to sustain the the um, the, the good gains that we have made. Um, and and uh, that is not to say that our government is not uh, contributing over the years of the global fund that's been with us. We've been, we've been incrementally increasing the, the, the funding. So eventually the, the, you know, the, the funding will, will, will be taken on. But it's just, um, you know, there are many other competing interests. So that's one big one, funding. The other, of course, is, is the capacity issue, uh, and and, uh, and and not just capacity, but trained and, and clearly, you know, the, the team that one needs to, to deal with with the control, uh, especially when when um, getting into to the uh, elimination or pre-elimination drive, you you need a lot more, you know, um, workforce and and you need a lot more expertise and resources to help you get through that. So, so that's why I said we are not naive. We, we, we understand that, th that we need to continue to sustain the control, but you know, where we can, where we can have that uh, uh, opportunity to, to, um, to, to move forward with the pre-elimination elimination, that's what we will do. And, and that's come true by um, a lot of our partners. Some of our partners are in the private sector um, one, one particular one is Rotary Against Malaria. Uh, they, they've been the mainstay in the distribution of nets, so they, they're very, very important um, partners that we've had. Uh, and, and of course, one of the, the biggest key players is the civil society and especially the community, how we mobilize the community to deal with uh, the treatment and, and, and those other you know, uh, preventative type strategies. As you know, one of the uh, reasons why the EPLMA was formed was to uh, ensure that there is focus in the um, greater Mekong region uh, because of the uh, resistance to artemisinin in there. Uh, so far in, in our country, we have not been able to demonstrate that, uh, but there is always the risk, especially with regard to, to the abuse of, of the artemisinin drugs and all of that. We've made sure that mono therapy is not, not one that that, that's uh, used at all, um, and we are trying to be vigilant to enable that to, to, to happen. So health security risk in terms of malaria uh, is, 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 um, is, is a threat, um, but that's why we have been, we have joined to be part of the AppMan, uh, so that with that network, uh, we can all like help contribute and, and, and support each other to, to, to get to deal with these issues that that uh, uh, that need uh, the support of every everyone, all, all the different uh, countries uh, working together.